Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the OP. Uh, G Power Ventures PLC Half Year Results Investor Presentation. Throughout this presentation, investors will be in listen only mode. Questions are encouraged and can be submitted at any time using the QA tab situated on the right hand corner of your screen. Please just simply type in your question at any time and press send. The company may not be in a position to answer every question it receives during today's meeting. However, the company will review all questions submitted today and publish responses where it's appropriate to do so. These will be available via your Investor Meet Company dashboard and will notify you by email when they're ready for your review. I'd also like to remind you that this presentation is being recorded. Before we begin, we'd like to submit the following poll, and if you would give that your kind attention, I'm sure the company would be most grateful. And I'd now like to hand over to Dmitry Cheskov, CFO from OPG. Good morning. Thank you, Mark, for the introduction. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm going to present you our results for the six months period ended 30th of September 2021 which is our interim uh, period for financial year 2022. And our theme of the presentation is continued focused on deleveraging and profitability and positioning the company for sustainable growth. The next slide, you can see our customary usual disclaimers, which you can uh, read at your leisure time. And uh, for people who are new to our company, just a, a snapshot of uh, operations of OPG, uh, we have uh, four third Thermal power plants located in Tamil Nadu and Chennai, which is the capital of Tamil Nadu. And uh, we have total capacity of 414 megawatt of thermal power plants. And we also have 31% uh, equity stake interest in four solar plants in uh, another southern state in India called Karnataka with total capacity of 62 megawatt. And our market capitalization uh, last week when we issued the results was uh, just under 52 million pounds. And we had 400 million shares issued. Moving on to uh, uh, our delivery on potential. Uh, here you can see a summary of uh, our positioning and uh, our financial strengths and also potential for further uh, sustainable operations. So uh, the company is uh, positioned on a very strong electricity market in India, uh, which has increases in consumption per capita year on year and uh, also uh, the growth in GDP, which is expected to be around eight, nine percent uh, this year and following years. Uh, OPG is very well positioned to take advantage of this uh, fast growing market and correlation between demand for power and growth in GDP. The company delivered on its uh, strategy, which was announced four years ago uh, to deleverage. And at the end of September 2021, our net debt position was uh, just uh, around five million pounds, which was a decrease from 16.2 million uh, at the end of March, which was just six months before that reporting period. And our gearing ratio is around 3%, which is one of the lowest in industry. There are no term loan repayments till June 2022, which uh, puts the company in very strong liquidity position. In terms of the potential, the company uh, has a track record of paying dividends uh, from 17 to 19. Uh, we had a cash dividend in 17, and then we had two years of script dividends. But uh, given the current volatility with commodities markets and also uh, focus on ESG activities, the board took a decision to revisit the dividend policy when situation normalizes. And also we are focusing on our delivering on our ESG agenda and sustainable growth. Moving on to the highlights of the first half year results, uh, we've generated 1.3 billion units of power which was a significant increase uh, from last year, which was 0.8 billion units. And this is on the back of recovery from uh, uh, COVID in India. And uh, we delivered strong revenue, uh, 55.6 million, again, an increase on uh, 36 million last year. And our average tariff for commercial and industrial captive uh, power stakeholders, shareholders, was around 5.5. Rupees per kilowatt hour, which is uh, around 5.5 pence per kilowatt hour. Our adjusted EBITDA for the first half of year was uh, just under 12 million. Profit before tax was 4 million. And as I mentioned earlier, gearing ratio was 3%, which was a decrease from 9% uh, last reporting period. And uh, uh, on this slide, we present one of our key performance indicators, which is a planned load factor. And effectively, this uh, 
PLF factor demonstrates how effectively we are utilizing our assets. Uh, you can see that uh, in historical uh, terms, our PLF was uh, consistently above 75%, which compares with average in India under 60%. So we're utilizing our assets quite efficiently. Obviously, we've been impacted uh, last year with uh, COVID uh, restrictions and uh, lockdowns. But uh, in the current reporting period, our PLF increased from 46% last year to 71%. However, uh, over the last several months, we experienced unprecedented increase in coal prices and freight costs. And uh, our uh, October and November PLF uh, was reduced to around 20% uh, because at the current international coal prices, uh, the generation is uh, not making any money. But we'll talk about this a little bit later at the following slides. Looking in more details at our financial highlights, uh, as I mentioned on the previous slide, our revenue increased by 50 to 55 million uh, on the back of recovery from COVID, which is effectively 54% increase. And our EBITDA was just under 12 million, uh, which is lower uh, in comparison with last year uh, due to a two major factors, one of them as an increase in coal prices uh, due to an unprecedented demand for coal from China, India and other developing countries, as other developing countries. Uh, but also last year we recognized uh, one of uh, uh, historical contractual claims around 9.6 million, which uh, uh, created quite an unfavorable comparison basis for the current period. However, our results in terms of profit before tax and uh, profit after tax we were very healthy. We had uh, profit before tax 7.4 million and profit after tax 4 million, 4.2 million. Uh, and uh, our diluted earnings per share was uh, just a little bit above one pence per share. Uh, cash flow from operations we were just under 12 million pounds. And uh, our net debt increased from 16.2 million to 5 million uh, on the back of uh, good generation, cash generation from uh, sales and recovery of uh, our receivables. And here we uh, summarize uh, our historical performance in terms of revenues, adjusted EBITDA, profit before tax. Uh, you can see here that uh, uh, pre-COVID times, uh, which was FY19, FI20, uh, the revenue was uh, um, more than 140 million. Then last year, FY21, when we were affected by COVID, revenue dropped to 94 million. And we we're, we're on the track to recover this year uh, from COVID, but uh, we have been um, affected by the unprecedented coal prices and freight costs. So for the second half of the year, we're expecting less generation, less revenue. So our uh, results for the full year FY22, uh, they, uh, they will be lower than the previous year. But uh, this is to change with normalization of commodities markets which we are very confident is going to happen in short to medium term. And uh, you can see also that EBITDA uh, was uh, consistently above 30 million uh, and actually fluctuating between 31 and 35 million over the last three financial years. This year, we were again on the track to deliver very strong EBITDA with half year results, 11.6 million. Uh, uh, having said this, uh, second half of the year is going to be uh, less uh, because of the uh, impact of coal prices and other factors. The key developments, uh, in addition to uh, what I already mentioned, is that uh, we've uh, managed to, uh, on top of uh, revenue and other financial results, we also managed to subsequent to September 30th uh, to sell some cargo of coal and realize the profit of 3.8 million pounds, which is uh, a very healthy result and we effectively uh, managed to take advantage of high coal prices uh, at the end of October, which reached a peak. And since that, they significantly decreased. Uh, but uh, uh, talking about our outlook, uh, it is important to again demonstrate that the company and the board uh, deliver delivered on what was promised in terms of deleveraging strategy. And uh, over the years, you can see that we've uh, decreased from more than 100 million uh, of uh, gross debt to just under 48 million gross debt. However, given that we have uh, significant cash generation 
and uh, we have uh, cash resources and uh, short-term investments. Our uh, net debt was just 5 million with gearing ratio of 3%. And for based on the half-year results, uh, net debt to adjusted EBITDA was just 0.4 um, compared with 0.5 last year. Uh, given that uh, second half of the year is going to be less in terms of revenue and generation, our net debt position is going to increase by the end of uh, March, but uh, this doesn't preclude us and prevent from continuing the leveraging strategy. And even with uh, some increase in net debt position, uh, we are expected to have a uh, very strong balance sheet and we're probably uh, least uh, leveraged company in power generation sector in India. And uh, on this slide, I just wanted to focus on uh, um, historical uh, volatility in terms of coal prices. Uh, exactly a year ago, uh, the cost of one ton of uh, Indonesian low calorific value 4200 gr coal was uh, under $30. And uh, you can see that historically, the prices were averaging over six, nine years, around $35, $36 per metric ton. But uh, uh, on the back of some geopolitical Chinese-related issues and also growth in economies post-recovery from COVID, uh, coal price increased to $154. Uh, per metric ton at the end of October. However, since that, uh, coal prices receded significantly around $65, $70 currently. Uh, still very high. Still, uh, that's not uh, something which uh, generates uh, money for OPG. But we are expecting that this downward trend is going to continue on the back of normalization of uh, commodities market and freight costs. And therefore, we are expecting that when we issue our uh, nine months trading operating uh, statement sometime uh, in January, beginning of February, we will be able to provide more visibility with uh, coal prices and how it impacts our performance. So our priorities remain pretty much consistent with what uh, we've communicated before. Uh, we are going to focus on maximization of cash flow from existing assets uh, in terms of generation and optimization of costs. Uh, but uh, this is obviously subject to coal price volatilities. What we managed to do and uh, what we are focusing now, instead of uh, just focusing on Indonesian uh, coal, we are procuring coal from different sources and we blend different types of coal. And there is a more proportion of uh, local domestic Indian coal, uh, which we managed to uh, procure. And we are working on uh, some uh, long-term fixed price arrangement for local Indonesian domestic coal, uh, which is not uh, directly correlated uh, by international coal prices. So our strategy is to effectively uh, take advantage of uh, this opportunity and uh, to reduce volatility in terms of our landed cost of coal and cost of generation. Uh, and uh, we are close to the port, so we can uh, take advantage of our geographical position by um, getting coal from Australia, South Africa, Indonesia, but also from India and uh, blending those type of coals to provide the best generation costs. Uh, in terms of our focus on uh, safety and environmental performance, we are really meeting all the standards and our uh, parameters in terms of safety and health are one of the best in the industry and we have no and very low uh, level of uh, recordable uh, incidents but the most one of the most important topics of the board the company right now is focusing on esg agenda uh, along with our fy21 results we've issued our first ever standalone esg report which is available on our website which provided a lot of information how the company addressing uh, all the three letters uh, of this uh, environmental social and governance uh, agenda uh, and uh, now we are evaluating a number of uh, ways how we can reduce our carbon footprint and offset offset it with uh, increase in our uh, renewable uh, asset base notably solar assets and uh, with introduction and bringing to india various energy transition technologies and that includes uh, potentially green hydrogen or energy efficiency technologies uh, we are evaluating those uh, options, and uh, we believe that the company is on on the right, in the right, moving in the right direction uh, to provide 
long-term strategy how we are managing the uh, climate risk with uh, uh, our main business being coal-fired thermal business but at the same time uh, we will offset this business with all those technologies this is not going to be a rush decision this will be a, a very uh, conscious and very uh, disciplined approach and we are always try, uh, for working in the best interest of our shareholders to uh, generate uh, sufficient return from those technologies and those opportunities and uh, in terms of our focus on deleveraging and sustainable growth uh, we will uh, conserve cash now for repayment of debt and ESG uh, focused projects uh, and we will revisit our uh, strategy in terms of dividends when the situation normalizes in due course uh, just a uh, refreshment refreshment in terms of our industry uh, and the uh, Indian markets uh, GDP is expected to recover uh, from uh, this year around 8.59 percent growth after the COVID restrictions period and uh, power is uh, directly correlated in, to increase in GDP you can see historical results still uh, in India we have uh, one of the lowest consumptions per capita uh, around the world it's 1200 kilowatt hours per capita in financial year 2020 with average world being around uh, 3300 kilowatt hours uh, per capita so India is expected to continue catching up with developed economies and other countries uh, with, uh, along with the growth in economy and uh, increase in wealth of the population and we already can see that uh, in uh, November 2021 power consumption rose by around 3.6 percent to just uh, around 100 uh, billion units uh, which an increase on uh, comparative period last year and uh, uh, also we uh, expect that this trend will continue with the further recovery as previously announced our deadline for meeting new emission norms was changed to December 2024 and the company is uh, evaluating and already uh, identified the right suppliers and technologies for meeting all those emission norms with uh, certain upgrades which will be reported in due course and behind uh, all these uh, uh, trends uh, we have number of uh, Indian government's initiatives including the urbanization building uh, smart cities and providing uh, power reliable power to all citizens and companies on the 24 7 basis uh, also there is a continued focus uh, for in this industrial push make in India and uh, improvements in infra infrastructure uh, projects and focus on India on pushing electric mobility and uh, also renewables energy Indian government put very significant uh, uh, very uh, ambitious targets in terms of uh, diversification energy from traditional sources to renewables however uh, it was recognized uh, and especially uh, during the last uh, COP26 which happened uh, here in Glasgow uh, that coal is uh, going to play vital and important role for developing countries like India and China uh, so the energy mix will be uh, skewed and redistributed towards renewable energy but at the same time uh, country will continue to consume around 60 percent uh, of power coming from uh, thermal coals and other uh, hydrocarbon sources uh, OPG is effectively trying to mimic this energy mix and uh, with a uh, major focus on coal thermal power we are conscious of ESG agenda and we will be diversifying over time into renewables and energy transition technologies which I mentioned earlier and we will be updating our investors on those developments and uh, with these slides um, I, this is a formal part end of part of end of formal presentation I would like to open the floor for the questions that's great Dimitri thank you so much for updating investors this morning ladies and gentlemen please do continue to submit your questions using the Q&A tab situated on the right hand corner of your screen but just while Dimitri takes a few moments to review those investor questions submitted already I'd like to remind you the recording of this presentation along with the copy of the slides and the published Q&A can be accessed via your investor meet company dashboard I'd also like to remind you that as usual your feedback is important and to the company and immediately after the presentation is ended we'll redirect you to the opportunity to provide your 
your feedback in order that the company can better understand your views and expectations. Um, Dimitri, obviously, you did receive a number of questions ahead of today's event, and you've received a, a, a number throughout uh, the live presentation. Uh, if I may, I'm going to hand it back to Simon Hudson, who will then moderate those questions, and then I'll pick up from you at the end. If I could hand back to you, Simon, and ask you to read out the questions and give a response, to Dimitri, where it's appropriate. Thank you. Um, thanks. Um, let's start with the pre-submitted questions. Um, um, there, are, there are a number of questions on coal, so um, perhaps, Dimitri, you could give some colour on, on the, how you intend to secure long-term sources of coal. Thank you, Simon. Uh, as I mentioned during the formal part of presentation, uh, we have flexibility in terms of uh, getting coal from differences. Now we're participating in options uh, for domestic Indian coal. Uh, and we were successful in terms of supplying, uh, procuring uh, some of the portion of our needs with local domestic coal. Uh, and we are also very close to finalization of long-term fixed cost supply agreement for a certain percentage of our annual costs for several years. Uh, also, we believe that our proximity to the ports and access to international markets gives us flexibility in terms of taking opportunities with uh, uh, supply of coal from different countries. That would be our strategy to make sure that we we are not dependent on one particular sort of uh, source of supply of coal. Uh, and uh, given that the world is becoming greener and cleaner, um, this is just a matter of time when commodity prices are going to moderate and normalize. And uh, therefore, we believe that coal prices should international coal prices should come back to um, mean average. And you saw in my presentation that, for example, Indonesian coal. Uh, for six, eight uh, years, average was around 36, 37 dollars per metric ton. But actually, we expect that it will be lower uh, than these numbers, given the um, green focus of all the countries and companies in the world. And last year, uh, coal prices dropped below 30 dollars. So uh, we have a number of opportunities how to manage this. And uh, I saw one of the questions asking about our hedging ratio. So for this year, we had around 20% of our coal, uh, international coal needs uh, uh, hedged uh, with fixed price contract at a good price. Uh, however, we already used up this coal to uh, generate power. Uh, so down, later in the year, we uh, were open to uh, the market fluctuations, but we have uh, sufficient supplies of inventory for the next several months uh, to generate power. And also uh, this month, we are already started receiving the coal coming from domestic Indian sources. We reduced our generation uh, in uh, October, November. It will be lower going forward to, uh, for the rest of the year, but we will uh, adjust our generation and uh, our revenues, obviously dependent to gener on generation, uh, given the coal prices dynamics. And uh, I'm uh, quite uh, hopeful that we will provide the comprehensive update on the dynamics of commodities market uh, when we issue nine months trading update results uh, at the end of January, beginning of February. Thanks, Dimitri. A um, couple of uh, financial questions now. Um, your last account showed financial instruments measured at fair value uh, through the P&L at 24.1 million. Could you, could you tell us what those financial instruments are, please? So effectively, uh, thank you, Simon, uh, 24 million, which is included in other current assets, represents investments in short-term uh, debt mutual funds, which are very liquid financial instruments, generating good return. And that's uh, the use of our uh, free cash uh, for basically generating some return while we are conserving uh, the financial resources for repayment of debt and also for ESG focused projects. We also have around 9.2 million uh, pounds of uh, investments in uh, mutual funds instruments, including uh, restricted cash in non current section of the balance sheet. And uh, this is a, a partial uh, reservation for uh, debenture redemption fund. Uh, in June 2020, we issued around 20 million pounds uh, three year uh, non convertible debentures. Uh, to prepay our term loans. Uh, the bullet payment will become due in June 2023. So we started accumulating 
uh, the funds for repayment of those debentures. So when we are talking about 5 million uh, net debt position at the end of September, uh, it is uh, effectively a um, gross debt, which is around 48 million minus uh, cash at the end of September, around 9.4 million, uh, 9.2 million, this uh, um, debenture redemption fund and 24 million, uh, above 24 million investments in short term mutual funds. So we are utilizing, we have a strong balance sheet and liquidity position exactly to withstand this period of volatility and uh, to uh, maintain sustainable operations of the company. Uh, and uh, we're expecting that this will help us to go through this period, turbulent period of time and come back to a uh, uh, period when we can actually uh, start growing as a company with uh, ESG focused projects, but also to be uh, very strong in terms of uh, our leverage and liquidity position. Um, thanks. The solar plants that you've got on the accounts are valued at um, 16.6 .6 million and are due to be sold. Can you give us an update on the sale process and should investors expect any write downs when you do sell them? So 16.6 uh, .6 million represents our investment in equity investment in uh, solar projects in Karnataka, 62 megawatt total capacity. We've announced this process a couple of years ago. Uh, we've been severely affected by uh, the COVID restrictions and uh, uh, we are still being restrict, uh, impacted by this. The solar assets remain in disposal process and uh, uh, we are hoping that we'll get some more clarity about success of outcome of our disposal activities and we will obviously report it in the uh, full year results uh, to, to the end of FY22 in March 20, when we are finishing March 2022. Uh, in terms of uh, write downs, that would be very premature to talk about anything until we complete the process. Uh, however, uh, we'll keep the market posted about uh, the progress. Uh, these are uh, good assets, but uh, they are unfortunately um, leveraged uh, at the building stage with 75% of debt, which has been uh, repaid to the banks. And there is uh, not much return to the company and to investors, especially in the current environment. So the strategic decision was made to realize return from the sale of those assets and to get it now rather than uh, wait when the debt is uh, fully repaid. So that was the rationale for putting it for sale. But uh, like I mentioned uh, just earlier, we've been impacted heavily by the uh, COVID restrictions. So uh, the process was delayed. Okay, um, can you confirm the capital debt repayments which are scheduled for um, the second half and for um, FY23, please? So we have uh, around 48 million of uh, gross debt and uh, we have, uh, I, would I would like to refer you to a uh, Senkis research analyst report, uh, which shows our guidance for uh, FY22 full year results. We were able to put it uh, along with half year results. Out of uh, 48 million pounds gross debt, around 20 million relates to uh, non-convertible debentures, which is a due uh, as a bullet repayment in June 2023. And the remaining 20 million of term loans, they are spread over repayments uh, over to, some, to June 2024. And we are starting doing repayments in uh, uh, June uh, 2022 uh, or scheduled terms. So <clears throat> in terms of uh, um, schedule of repayments, that would be the uh, kind of breakdown. And uh, again, I would like to refer you to uh, pr projections of Senkas analysts, uh, which gives a balance sheet position at the end of March, projected balance sheet position at the end of March with a short term and long term split of our debt. Okay. <clears throat> um, did your reduced operations in October and November impact on your relationships with customers? We continue working uh, very cooperatively with our customers. We, uh, they fully appreciate uh, that uh, we, we've been uh, impacted by high volatility in coal prices. Actually, uh, we were probably one of the last companies, private producers who reduced the power supply. Uh, uh, the answer would be no, we, uh, we have still good relationship with our customers. 
they have alternative sources of power. They can buy power from uh, state distribution companies. It is at higher cost in comparison with what we can sell, but uh, uh, we um, manage our relationship in an efficient way. And I would like to emphasize that actually we have our capacity is uh, sold out to customers. And as soon as coal prices normalize, we will be able to return to our usual levels of operations and uh, 70 plus percent uh, PLF. Uh, so that's uh, uh, something which is expected in near term as soon as we see moderation in, in coal prices and freight costs. Could you um, um, update us on your projected capex for the next um, couple of years? So projected capex is, uh, uh, we have uh, all, some capex allocated towards uh, meeting the new environmental norms. And uh, we have another three years for those capex. Previously, we put some guidance of total capex around 15 million pounds for those purposes. Uh, it will be probably on the lower side when we revise the uh, offers from uh, various suppliers, which we already have discussions with. Uh, for the rest of the year, we have just around uh, under 2 million pounds uh, capex relating to those needs and also some repairs, refurbishments on the plant. Uh, by the way, uh, the period of low activities uh, in October, November and going forward, we are using for uh, doing some uh, regular maintenance shutdown activities and uh, improvement on operations. So when operations restart fully, uh, we will be more efficient in terms of heat rate and generation of power. So we are utilizing this time eff effectively. Uh, but uh, uh, we don't have significant capex apart from uh, the capex relating to uh, this meeting emission uh, norms, new emission norms, including um, NOx, nitrogen dioxide, and uh, SOx, sulfur dioxide. Uh, so we have relatively lower capex uh, uh, this year, and uh, the rest of the capex will be spread over the three years to meet the uh, requirements at the end of 2024. What's the um, uh, economic rationale for buying solar um, uh, and ESG assets when, when solar tariffs are so low? Why not return cash to shareholders? We, uh, I would like to clarify, uh, it's not buying solar, it is uh, considering various uh, renewable projects to actually uh, build uh, solar projects. And we have to be cognizant of the fact that the world changed and the climate risk at the top of the agenda of uh, a lot of our investors, including institutional investors. And we have to demonstrate uh, how the company is uh, moving towards this uh, offsetting carbon footprint. Uh, so we uh, are obviously positioned on the high growing emerging markets of India uh, with uh, very ambitious targets of Indian government to increase um, in renewable portion of energy mix. And it's not just uh, renewable energy, it's also various uh, energy transition technologies. I mentioned green hydrogen, for example, we are evaluating various projects on this area, which could be combined with new solar projects. So uh, we would like to uh, present to our investors very compelling case that uh, there is a sustainable growth uh, for the company. But I also fully appreciate the question about return to, of, to return of um, funds to our shareholders. And this is something with the boards uh, is discussing pretty much at every board meeting. And we are targeting to uh, revisit our dividend policy or to do other some form of return to shareholders, maybe to the share buyback or something like that. Uh, when we have more uh, stability with uh, operations post uh, uh, normalization of coal prices and also uh, uncertainties relating to COVID, uh, whatever, whatever name for a new variant it is uh, on the market right now. So, we are listening to feedback from our shareholders and investors, and uh, we have to demonstrate uh, growth with the ESG uh, focus. But uh, at the same time, we are uh, obviously uh, looking at the return and long term sustainable re return for shareholders uh, as part of the whole uh, story of the company. It's not just uh, uh, becoming completely uh, dividend paying uh, company, it is also um, showing how we can grow uh, in terms of uh, next decades to come. 
Thank you. Um, uh, when do you expect um, to start paying your <clears throat> deferred taxes, if you expect to at all? Deferred taxes is a, a counting concept uh, which is uh, not directly impacting and is, is not transforming in towards uh, uh, tax uh, payable position. It is uh, a, effectively uh, a tax calculated on the difference between uh, counting and tax base of the assets. Uh, so whatever the number you see in the financials, it will be reverting over the years uh, and uh, uh, it is going to be a number of years before over which it is going to come because as mo there is a different rate at which you depreciate your assets, notably property plan equipment for accounting and tax purposes. And this creates this rise for deferred tax. Uh, <clears throat> um, is there a chance that um, gearing could increase this year as a result of the price of coal and the reduced generation? Uh, the coal price is definitely going to impact our operations. Therefore, it will reduce our cash flows. And the uh, net debt position is going to increase by the end of March, but it will be a manageable uh, position and still very robust at the end of this year. Uh, again, I would like to refer you to uh, Senka's research report, which provides kind of full picture for the rest of FY22. And uh, we will be providing guidance and revisions in our views and estimates um, when we issue nine months trading update results. And hopefully this will be a positive one with the coal price being on the way to moderate. Thanks. Fi final question, really. I think, I think you've answered um, all of the other ones, Dimitri. Um, it's a question from Pierre um, saying for long-term investors, um, uh, he would like to register shares under um, his own name instead of keeping them in a nominee name. Um, uh, could you please tell um, tell him who your registrar is and how he would go about transferring shares from a nominee name into his own name? Mm -hmm. A link is our registrar, and uh, maybe we can take this question offline and uh, we can direct and connect peer uh, to our register uh, to guide him on this process. This is not what uh, the company is doing. This is what uh, uh, obviously our registrar would be able to help with, but we would be happy to connect peer to the right people. Cool. Um, final one. Um, where can shareholders find the Senkos report? It is on our uh, website. There is a, there are two actually reports, research reports, Senkos and uh, uh, Edison and uh, they are automatically uploaded on our website in analyst research section. And again, we can probably share the link to the, exactly to the section of the website to uh, help our investors to see the research reports. That's... Thank you very much. That's great, Simon. Thank you very much indeed for uh, for hosting the Q&A and thank you to all the investors that have submitted questions today. If any further questions do come in, Dimitri, we'll obviously make those available for you for your review um, as and when. Um, I'll shortly redirect investors, Dimitri, to provide you with their thoughts and expectations and give you some feedback. Uh, but before doing so, I just wondered if I could hand back just for a few closing comments just to wrap up with. Um, I would like to uh, thank all our uh, shareholders, including institutional retail shareholders, for their uh, support, and especially during this uh, turbulent and very difficult period of time. Uh, the company uh, is doing all the best, all the possible to uh, return to normal operations subject to uh, factors which are outside of our control. And uh, we look forward to keep updating you on our results in due course. Thank you very much for your time, and um, we look forward to your questions. Thank you. Thanks. Dimitri, thank you very much indeed for updating investors this morning. Could I buy, please ask investors not to close this session as we'll now redirect you for the opportunity to provide your feedback in order that the company can better understand your views and expectations. This will only take a few moments to complete, but I'm sure is greatly valued by the company. On behalf of the management team of OPG Power Ventures, we'd like to thank you for attending today's presentation. That now concludes today's session. Good morning to you all. <laughs>